What is that sound? Where is it coming from? We all know a song that is millions of years old. It reaches us traveling through time. As we can understand, such an ancient song must be very simple. And it is that hundreds of millions of years before flowers appeared on Earth, this song was already sung. Cuckoo, hello, hello, ding dong. An interval that has come to us. The doors, they call with that sound. And of music, communication, the essence of life, the concert we are at, languages are born. A legacy that comes before the reality of each moment. The first time I saw Kanagur between songs, he talked about how to travel in time. Why would a physicist a student dedicate his life to his love of music? Because it's a time machine. At that concert, we began to build the seed of this project. The intention of sharing health through music and cultures, understanding the paths of this struggle for life in peace and the challenge of conflict. At the beginning of the project, we shared concerts, songs, partners, art and culture lovers, defenders of justice, health and beauty, pieces of memory, very special moments for us. Thousands of different stories met. The Nightingale in the Golden Cage. This song we are hearing tells a story that we can find almost all over Asia. The conflict between freedom and the value of beauty locked in that golden cage, maybe we ourselves. Some songs have been reflected as the first ones in history, like the epitaph of Seikilos. As long as you live, shine, fear nothing at all. Life is short and time demands an end. Other stories and other documents can be found. Which are the first ones? Who were the witnesses? The first accounts in history can be found in the cuneiform writings. Many of these tables speak of battles and victories, but others are intimate. One in particular caught our attention. Perhaps the first song ever, Soldier's Lullaby. Have human feelings and conflicts changed 
What do we know about their art and their society? And, of course, what can we know about the lullaby? If history begins with the first writings, Evet, ne konuşacağız şimdi? History begins with Moses. İnsanların hislerine hiç değişmediğini Sümer metinlerinden öğreniyoruz. Yani insanlar Gılgamış destanında ki onun o kadar şey olması, meşhur olması, bugünkü insanın hislerini aynen yansıtması bakımından. Yani şöhret işçi, o üzüntüsü, sevgisi hepsi orada gösteriyor. İnsanlar yani hiçbir zaman hislerinde değişmemiş. Ben şimdi kendime bakıyorum. Yüz yaşındayım. Acaba hislerimde değişiklik var mı diye düşünüyorum. Hayır hiç yok. Ben gençken olduğu gibi sevebiliyorum. Gençliğimde olduğu gibi bir güzel şey gördüğüm zaman heyecanlanıyorum. Üzülüyorum, ağlıyorum. Hani hiç hislerimde en ufak bir değişiklik yok. Ben fark etmiyorum. Demek ki yüz yaş, yüz yaşında olmama rağmen fark etmedim. Aynı çalışma arzum aynı. Gezmek ayaklarım müsaade ederse gezerim. Bir şey mesela bayılıyorum sanat yerlerini gezmeyi, bir sanat eserlerini dinlemeyi, şey etmeyi çok hoşuma gidiyor ama gidemiyorum. Bak bak. Hani demek ki İnsanların hissi değişmiyor. Sümerlerde zamanında da aynı. İnsanlar sevmiş, kıskanmış, üzülmüş, kızmış, kavga etmiş. Aynen devam etmiş. Hiç farkı yok. Betinlerde bunları görüyoruz. İşte Ninni de görüyoruz. Anne sevgisi, anne heyecanı. Annenin üzüntüsünü görüyoruz. Öbür taraftan kıskanç bir kadının şeyini görüyoruz, okuyoruz. Yani kızlık kızgınlığını okuyoruz. Öbür tarafta bir anne sevgisini okuyoruz. Annesinin bir çocuğun sevgisini yazmış. Ne kadar güzel o. Babanı Babası ölüyor, ona güzel bir yazı yazıyor, şiir yazıyor. Hani bugünün ben hiç farkı olmadığını görüyoruz hayatım. İnsanlarda hırs var, sahip olma hırsı var her zaman. Elde etme hırsı var, kazanma hırsı var, yapma hırsı var. Bu devam etmiş. Ne yapalım? Bu hırsı gideremiyoruz. Hala öyle devam edip gidiyor. Evet. Hırslarını yani söndürülebilir. Ama herkes de o e, müzik kabiliyeti yok kız kızım. Yani ancak o işten gelecek. O müziği yapacak, onu duyacak, onlar da, o olmayan insanlar da, o olamaz bence. Kendi içinde müzik zevki olmayan insanların yani birçok hırslarını, birçok şeylerini müzikle kapatacağını pek tahmin etmiyorum. Yani sanatkar değil fakat sanatı seven, sanatı sanattan anlamaya çalışan insanlar tabii öyle. 
Yani e, daha e, insancıl, daha e, şey yani huzurlu olabilirler. Ama sanattan anlamayan, sanatı bilmeyen, anlamayan, bilmeyenler bunu yapmazlar, zannetmiyor. Sanattan anlamayan insanda bir huzur pek olmaz. Yani ancak sanattan anlayacak, onu şey yapacak, o kendine bir huzur verecek. Çalmasa bile. Mesela ben kendimi öyle düşünebilirim. Ben çalmıyorum ama böyle bir müzik duyduğum zaman, bir şey duyduğum zaman son derece mutlu oluyorum. Yani o mutluluk bana bir huzur veriyor, bir sükunet veriyor. Kavga etmek istemem. Ben hastalıklı toplum kabul etmiyorum da. Aa, hastalıklı toplum kabul etmiyorum, ne yapayım? Yani, bizim gençlerde çok tatlı çocuklar var, ben görüyorum. Çok akıllı, ondan sonra çok başarılı, çok şeyli çocuklar var. Bakın şu gezi e, şeyinde, ne kadar güzel bir gösteri yaptılar. Bayıldım. Hani bu her zaman, her zaman karışıklık böyle şey toplumların içinde. Hiçbir zaman huzurlu bir toplum olmamış dünyada. Tarihi görün, açın, bakın hep öyle. Hiçbir zaman huzurlu bir toplum olmamış. Ne kadar huzurluysak ona şey diyeceğiz, mutlu olacağız, o kadar. Hakikaten onun için ben toplumumuzu, insanımızı kötü olarak, böyle hastalıklı olarak kabul etmek istemiyorum. İletişim eksikliği. Evet. Kendi görüşüm Münih hakkında. Yani her anne çocuğuna nini söyler. Demek ki annelerin çocuklar çocuklarıyla bir iletişim kurması niniyle. Daha bebek çok küçükken. Ben öyle diyorum. Nini anneyle bir anneyle çocuğun bir iletişimi. Yani nini e, söylemedeki söylemindeki ruh o zamandan bu zamana aynen geliyor mu diyorsunuz? Bana kalsa geliyor. Yani ben madem ki bir anne ile çocuk arasındaki bir iletişimdir bu. Onun bütün hiçbir şey değişmedi bu iletişimlerde, yani hislerde. Şu halde bugün de annelerin aynı hisle çocuklarına nini söylüyor ve onlarla bir nevi iletişim kuruyor demektir. Yani hiçbir zaman kültürün yani şey etmediği, değişmediği anlaşılıyor. Hislerin değişmediği. Anlaşılıyor bu da. Ninni ninni Neşe dolu şarkımla Kuvvetli olarak büyüsün o Neşe dolu şarkımla Kocaman olsun o 
irin ağacı gibi kökünden kuvvetli olsun o. Şa- şakir bitkisi gibi tacından geliş büyüsün o. Uyku, o senin üzerine elini koyacak. Orada yatan seni koruyacak. Oğlum, uyku seni yeniyor. Uyku üstüne çökmek üzere. Gel uyku, gel uyku. Onun yorgun gözlerini uyut. Elini onun kömür gözlerinin üzerine koy. Ağlayan diline, ağlamasıyla uykusunu bozdurtma. Sevgili. It is likely that a lullaby is the first song in history, the first breath we receive from our mothers. Sulji and Tara Moran put in writing the song they dedicate to their son, who was sick and needed care, telling us that they rocked him to sleep, a nostalgic and soothing song. Later on, musical notation exercises were written as in the Cheyenne MS-5105. The first songs with musical notation appear, such as tributes to battles and gods, the Ugarit to the goddess Nikal. We still preserve instruments from that time, like the Harmose, from around 3,500 years ago. Preceding the fresh writings, we know musical instruments made with great delicacy and detail, like the lyras of Ur, about 4,400 years old. But we don't know what songs and stories reflect its drawings. Even further back in time, the drawings and symbols demonstrate that the communities used to enjoy an extensive cultural life. Entendemos que los edificios culturales son necesarios para los humanos, porque son necesarios las bibliotecas, los espacios musicales, los espacios, los archivos, los museos, las catedrales, los templos. Hoy lo hemos diversificado todo, pero los espacios culturales nacieron en las cuevas como uno solo y de aquí se diversificó todo. Por eso en las cuevas no solo aparece el arte, no solo aparece el dibujo, la escultura, el, el grabado, sino que también aparecen los instrumentos musicales. Y eso quiere decir que eran espacios culturales, no diversificados, sino unificados. Y en ese sentido, el arte tiene un valor añadido, y todos los humanos del siglo XXI lo sabemos, que, que nos vincula con nuestra propia cultura, con el saber más alto. Hoy en día no se estudia el arte como la técnica que ha permitido hacer estos dibujos, sino el por qué a, a, estos dibujos han permanecido con validez cultural durante tantos milenios. Es decir, que venían a verlo. Los grupos venían a verlo. In Artales Cave, there is a wonderful collection of drawings and other traits of culture's life that for hundreds of centuries they made here. A small child's handprint at the cave's bottom serves as evidence of classes which were held in ancient times. Maybe also were sung. Estamos hablando de cosas que tienen 30.000, 20.000 años dibujadas. Y entonces, estos son, no hay por qué creerse que estos sean sus dioses. Esto es su catálogo de alimentos. Y a lo largo de 300 siglos, nadie dibujó encima de nadie. Sí, ningún autor hizo su dibujo por encima de un autor anterior. 
con lo cual hay un concepto de respeto, primero, y segundo, de añadido a la iconografía. Aquí hay cosas que, por ejemplo, estas cosas pueden tener 20.000 años de antigüedad y las manos 40.000 años de antigüedad. Así que están entre nosotros, eh, eh, esto es, es, en los dibujantes de estos ciegos están entre nosotros y las manos, que, que eran ya 20.000 años antiguas. No, no, nunca fue solo arte. Que nunca fue solo arte porque no fue. El, el, los motivos dibujados no fue nunca una cuestión personal, sino fue una cuestión global de la comunidad. Y por tanto aquí no es solo arte, hay que transmitir una información. Además, una información útil y tan útil que sirvió durante muchos cientos de siglos. De haber perdido su validez, lo hubieran borrado, hubieran hecho otra cosa en sí. Nunca perdió su validez. Es el mismo discurso. Siempre. The bull rudder or rumbus was used throughout the world for 20.000 years. Flutes made out of different bones about 35 years old have been found in different parts of the world and in some cases built by other species that lived with us, like Neanderthal flutes. antes que nosotros. Obviamente lo, lo nuestro es una herencia de, de, todo lo que, de todo lo que ha pasado por aquí, eso está claro. ¿no? Lo que pasa es que claro, no se sabe muy bien qué. Y somos muchas veces somos tan orgullosos que nos creemos haber inventado cosas. ¿no? Cuando en realidad pues son seguramente adquiridas de otros conocimientos. ¿no? Que al fin y al cabo lo mismo. we can find the last sample of Neanderthal life, this symbol that looks like a prehistoric hashtag. La copia tiene una cuota de error. Si el error es tomado como como tal pues eh, así queda el error, pero muchas veces el error engendra un nuevo, un nuevo sistema y, y en consecuencia una nueva, una nueva música. Por ejemplo, el, la fórmula del guaguancó pues fue seguramente mal copiada por los por los españoles que fueron, que estuvieron allí y, y se trajeron una rumba que en sí podíamos decir que puede ser un, menos compleja que el guaguancó o una fórmula más, más simple, pero al hacerse simple también elabora sus propias leyes de manera de que de repente una cosa simple se convierte en, un, en una compleja nuevamente y vuelve a tener su sabor y su y su idiosincrasia completa. Así seguramente ha pasado por los siglos de los siglos. Y, y las, copias, las copias con errores se convierten en sistemas nuevos y sistemas que tienen 
nuevas eh, alternativas y, y nuevas visiones. En definitiva, podías decir que eso que el error no existe. Ta también no sé quién inventó la pólvora por error, no sé quién parece que descubrió América por error, y tantas y tantas cosas que se pueden hacer por error y que de repente eh, significa un nuevo horizonte. Así que el error no existe. Yo muchas veces cuando toco, haces, haces una, una nota, te das cuenta de que hay un, un error, de que has metido una nota que a priori no está bien, pero eh, en vez de rehusarla, la somatizas y entra perfectamente dentro de la armonía. Y de hecho puede ser la piedra angular de, un nuevo, eh, de una nueva emoción, de un nuevo sistema armónico. ¿no? Así que... Es difícil verlo así, pero, pero funciona. Yo, vamos, mi vida es un error en el cual me baso continuamente <ríe> y de ahí evoluciono a, a, a nuevos horizontes y nuevas sensaciones. We don't know what happened over a long period of time, but we do know some of the oldest drawings and engravings, like those found in the cave of Blombos, South Africa. A small flake of rock and other fragments proves a symbolic communication capacity dating back to 40,000 and 70,000 years. One of these pieces perhaps shows us a plan of a hat or a kind of trigram with several zigzags. Some 50,000 years ago seems to coincide with an awakening in explosion that left blow hands in parts of the world as diverse as Europe and as we see in this case in Sulawesi a very isolated region in South Asia, Leang Cave. I also learned that its name was translated as the King's Cave, because there lived a wise man of great abilities. Some stalagmites and stalactites show signs of their use as lithophones, with music that has resounded for 100,000 years. These findings demonstrate that the musicality appeared as one of the first forms of expression, not just in our species. Being part of the diversity of customs and rituals that have evolved in different ways up to our times. In many cases, a legacy transmitted between generations. In others, professional heritage. It is common to find musical rituals all over the world, associated with funerals, weddings and various social events. Probably many of these mythological stories all over the world, before they were written, they were songs and prayers dedicated not only to gods and relevant characters, but also to life and people.
So uh, first one, uh, as I'm a composer and I'm a musician in Malaysia Gamelan, and I was born in traditional family. My father was uh, the drummer, you know, he's a musician. He, he teaches me the first time to play kendang, you know, to play gamelan. And I grew up become musician and composer. And I grew up in this village. Which is now you see a bit that where hotel, restaurant, it full storage. And then it is same thing, the music, you know, the musician, you know, the artist. How they can survive? Of course, you know, uh, they do something for tourists because they need the food, they need to eat, you know. Um, but in the same way, you know, the kuasa and the power, you know. Stories. The world is stories. They they come to enjoy it. They come to have fun. They come to the place which is give them something happy. It's not not something thinking about, but something I wanna have fun. I wanna relax. I wanna you know that stories. This is you know the connection in between touristic industrial. And of course, I can say a stupid thing for myself because who care? Who care about the thinking about? Who care nature? It's money. You know, when I was a kid, this place it best for me. It's best, you know. Balinese people they love their place. They love their culture. They love their island. So the my question. It is Balinese people. They still love their island. They still love their culture or their traditional way. Who is the industry? What is the direction? Where is the culture orientation? We lost it. We lost, you know, the culture of hearing. Because people think the image is more important. Because you know, if if you see the promote the promotion, always tell you the image. Especially today, where you know, like the globalization, you know, when the nature disturbed by. The power, the, the the the power about money. Of course, of course, uh, I need money. <laughs> People need money because that's that's the the realistic now. Now it's not like maybe Bali in let's say in, in early of nineteen ninety. So. You know we can share in the village. You know you you don't you don't have a food. You just go to the next family. You can eat together, but not today because I don't know the answer. But in art, like why the industry? So just just too many things. You know I have to thinking. It's a big thing. But in the the point is, what should I do? So I came back to myself. I just do what I love. I want to do what I love on the right way. As well as I'm, you know, artist as well as composer. I compose a piece with my idea. It's not just about how my idea can be played on the instrument, on the media of instrument gamelan or you know instrument. Music, but also how to share to the people. Because what what I believe with my idea, it is on the right way. You know, uh, 
um, because my work or my peace that I believe and then I that I believe to answer my question. Because I wanted the next generation, you know, learn how to listen. Uh, learning to listen. That means there are no understanding. Uh, because no understanding, there are no appreciation. To me, you know, when you think about love, you know, even you have you don't have to say it because if you feel it and you have a sensitivity feeling, you know it's love. As my musician or you know composer, it's depend on contact because the the process is still uh, like a practice, you know. But it, love is, like I said, it's here. When you know everything and you can feel it, you know, that's love. But in the process, because you learn. So love is, love is something, you know, you don't need to find anywhere. But love you can find in your shell first. You need struggle. You need struggle to tell people about love, you know. They coming. And I tell them, you know, I love you all. You play my piece. And they play again, play again, play again. And they understand what I mean. Even they can't say anything because they're abstracting. Love is abstract. People fight because they forget the law. They don't help it when they fight. It seems like my music. And we learn it, we want to develop it. we do evolution to this. It's not just evolution. You know, um, uh, but people always make a competition. You know, because I have a opinion. Just because of power, you know. You know, Tajan, cockfighting, all the king like that. You know, in our story, all the king like like that, love that, and they use. People like cockfighting. They used to call it like cockfighting. The famous music now in Bali is still kabiar. That's good music. I like it, of course. So why they famous? People won't understand. But the root of kabiar is competition. The root, the akar, is is, is competition. Kabiar is about the struggle. The struggle about freedom. It's not about competition. That's because they have a power. The music is powerful because of the struggle. They took the music from the kingdom to the public, to the people. For the people, it's not just for the king, but for the people. And freedom, it's a big struggle. And then, after that, the power control again. Uh, care about how to listen it. It's enough. Long time ago, uh, people, uh, the king, it's like cockfighting, and then, okay, you good musician, you good musician. But the king said, let's do better. People, oh yes! Because king have the power. They don't understand what going on. They just won't understand what they know, like before. But my music is not for before. 
This is music. It's for music. For evolution of music. We cannot uh, run from the evolution. Everything can be changed. Because of that, we need to know how to change. So again, if you say love, that's it. So in the struggle about the good way you believe it, love coming. Like a music give me a lot, give me a lot. The music give me a lot, you know. I want to find myself there, and I want to tell the musician, "Is find yourself there." It's that because we work hard, we practice hard to find ourselves there. So don't care what people said. But if we find what's up there, because this music, I what I believe is this good music. Yeah, that to me, what I do here, it, it is for music. So, um, you know, to me, like you said, music happens because the culture. Music is everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. But you are not everywhere. So, it's music is the knowledge. You know, like, like you see the the horizontal of the uh, on the ocean. Uh, you understand more gonna be. You see more far. But you feel enough, you know, because you are yeah, like under control of your egoism. Because you don't have enough knowledge. Yeah. You know? Like this, you see very high, and you can't see what's going on in the far. It's never ending. And this process, and this is a process. The horizon, the knowledge, the limit of love.
dirimu Hatiku merasa nyaman Saat pertama Ku melihat wajahmu Kau tersenyum padaku Jantungku bertetak gancang Ku ingin kau tahu Isi hatiku Yang belum sempat ku bilang Saat itu Di kamu Sana ku ingin kau tahu ku menyayangimu Eh kamu yang jauh di sana ku ingin kau tahu ku mencintaimu walau Kau tak sayang padaku Namun hatiku kan selalu Cinta kepadamu Cinta kepadamu Mencintai kamu During the trip to Indonesia, we were able to witness the enormous diversity of Indonesian cultures. We were invited to visit some of the first vestiges of Indus. In the jungle, near the village of Bengala, a place called Deaf Village, because a big deaf community learned to communicate with symbols and where a deaf musician festival is celebrated. We also got to know the depth of the cultures of Makassar and their songs. The stories begin the Gayan flows of the Batuan temple. And of course, the obsessionality and virtuosity of these artists. evolution has been the fruit of influences very little extended in the world. Music developed with modes and temperaments exclusive from these so isolated regions of the planet. There are millenary connections between cultures of Sulawesi and other islands with Australian of origin. Its genetics confirm the association between these two peoples separated by nature. About 10,000 years ago, after the last ice age of the planet, the levels of the oceans and seas have risen and changed several times. Some of these events are known in different mythologies throughout the world. Knowledge probably in the form of songs which arrived at our times through our cultures and the people who studied them. Well, uh, my name is Brian Mooney and I'm a professor of philosophy and, uh, and head of School of Creative Arts and Humanities at Charles Darwin University. 
and uh, I was quite excited to hear about the project that you were engaged in um, on the philosophical relationship between music, justice, love and, uh, and how this plays itself out in our historical traditions. Um, in this respect, I think it's very interesting that the, the great ancient Greek philosopher Plato uh, thought that the world was made up by God or the Demiurge uh, under two conditions. One was mathematical rigor, but the other one was music, music and playfulness. And of course, the idea of music as being part of the created order uh, is a very old trope in many traditions from the Aboriginal traditions of Australia, the indigenous traditions, across many of the most ancient and uh, great traditions of the world. In the, uh, in the ancient Greek world again, Pythagoras um, had a theory about the harmony of the spheres, that there was a music built into the cosmos, uh, that, uh, that if we attuned ourselves, attuned our souls to the, uh, to the nature of the rhythms of the universe, that that musicality would come out on us, that we would participate in the divine music. And it's interesting in this respect as well, when I was talking about Plato, that the, the Sufi philosophers, um, Sufi thinkers from the Islamic tradition, from Tasawwuf, uh, also referred to Plato as, and this is almost uh, uh, you know, sacrilegious from the, from the perspective of Islam, they referred to Plato as the divine Plato. And this is partly because of the, uh, the wondrous uh, engagement uh, that he has with the nature of the human soul and uh, its relationship to community, to music, and to, uh, and to truth, justice, um, goodness and beauty. Now, one of the things about the, uh, the musical culture is that it, it celebrates something very, very deep. I don't know that it's ever possible to put your finger exactly on what it is that resonances, these resonances that come from music, from song. But nonetheless, uh, they, they do deeply affect people. Um, so uh, the, the, the experiences of, of, of uh, engaging in a mu musical, a musical life um, uh, created great friendships, great understanding of uh, other traditions, other ways of looking at things. It also uh, relates very strongly, the musical tradition, to something that I take to be very, very important, which is storytelling. I think that one of the problems with modern society is that we have forgotten how to be storytellers. Now most rich cultures have a very strong account of storytelling and, and engaging in storytelling, storytelling about their lives, about their histories, about their grandparents, generations that went before. And it's this song, music, storytelling that ties all these elements of cultural history together and creates us as the kinds of persons we are. Mostly related to the relationship between three questions. What is the nature of the self? What is the nature of love and friendship? And what is the nature of justice? These are the three interlinking questions that have animated my philosophical background, but also my musical history. And when I talk about music, I think it's also important that despite this wondrous capacity for music to create friendships um, across divides, across uh, cultures and traditions, it's also that it is a two, it's a double-edged sword because sometimes music can also be used for purposes which actually relate to violence and not to peace. Uh, I think we too often forget this. Storytelling can also go the, uh, the same direction. Storytelling can be edifying, it can create the, 
the conditions under which our souls are, are amplified, in which we can engage with other people in richer and deeper ways uh, of meaning. But it can also do the opposite. It can lead to situations where a song, in particular, uh, with a pol particular political message can lead to murder. Music has on the one hand the capacity to create wonderful synergies and to, uh, to lead to embracing of others and understanding, but it can at the same time also be used for other purposes. Of course, protest is a very, very important aspect of the nature of the song tradition. But remember, we now use the, word, the term protest in a kind of negative way, but its original meaning in the Latin is, is to stand for something. Um, it's to go, it's, it's, it's to stand up and be counted. So protest uh, and political songs, social uh, commentary, are crucial dimensions of that tradition because they're trying to find or trying to explicate the nature of injustices and how they might be uh, dealt with. So the, that musical tra tradition is, uh, is alive, uh, is important, is flourishing and it's something that I'm deeply committed to along with my philosophy as well, which, uh, as I say, has been largely related to questions around the nature of the self, the nature of love and friendship, and to the nature of justice. I think one of the things that the appreciation of music lends to anyone is the capacity to listen, because you're listening to uh, Standing back from the, the maelstrom of activity that goes on in everybody's lives, where we're busy, busy, busy. And there's a time to stop, step back from that and to contemplate the musicality and the lyrics within the very present. This um, aesthetic dimension of, uh, of human beings uh, is, I think, crucial and is also uh, in the busyness of the modern world increasingly becoming lost, uh, the capacity to step away from all of these things to just engage in pure aesthetic pleasure of uh, listening carefully to lyrics or listening carefully and becoming immersed in the music. Um, what is this life so full of care? We have no time to stand and stare. And of course, I think this is part of the problem. But people who become attuned to music, uh, when they're careful in listening to music, they develop responses and capacities that enable them to live more healthily as human beings. Because that kind of uh, pure aesthetic pleasure is it's pristine in a way that so many uh, pleasures are not. Um, it, uh, it, it has a form of self-transcendence, moves us both inter interiorly, but also moves us beyond ourselves to think the beauty that lies outside the nature of the self. We don't have the time and the capacity to appreciate everything, but certainly we should make the time to try and appreciate something. You know, on the one hand, philosophy is an attempt to uh, bring under some form of rational control. One of the philosophers, who still holds that there's a great deal of mystery, what you call magic, in the nature of the world. Uh, I think it's part of the great joy of living that there is this magic or this, this m mystery, the mystery of the self. Even though I've spent you know, 35 years studying the nature of love and friendship, uh, I understand a bit about it. I don't think I can ever understand wholly the nature of the depths of the mystery of love and the depths of the mystery of friendship. I agree with you that there's a certain kind of magic associated with music. Um, uh, there have been some philosophers who have tried to explicate in some way these uh, the, the, this magical nature of music and its relationship to the self, its relationship to society through justice, which is a form of music, a harmony. Uh, the, uh, you know, for instance, Emanuel Swedenborg developed a theory of correspondence, which is the way in which uh, there are 
reciprocal influences between various kinds of spiritual dimensions of the world will be expressed in the forests, in the sea, in the mountains, in music, and will have reflections in the nature of the self. And of course, in the Middle Ages, this was part of the nature of the alchemist's work, to see what the correspondences are between the various elements and how they relate to each other in these uh, quasi-magical ways. So uh, I think, uh, I, I, I do believe that music is one of the ways in which we open ourselves up to mystery. Uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, I think mystery is a very healthy thing to have. Even here, it seems that the mystery will always be with us. In a small cave in the middle of the Australian deserts, we dedicate this musical reflection which was preceded by our younger choir, a small community with a background of exceptional inclusion. I would like to use, in part, the words of a fellow invited to the project that no longer accompanies us, Jose Cervera. 
Usually we have shared the planet with other hominid species, or relatives, who were also intelligent. Since the Neanderthals went extinct, we are alone. But there are other ways of being human, a human being. In Australia, there were more than 900 communities with hundreds of different languages. Their culture was completely different from the rest of the world. Their stories from dreaming time, a dimension that units all of times. All these stories are songs, and it is not just songs. It is a map, a file, a calendar, the law, conditioning, even historical facts that have been preserved in songs from 70,000 years ago. What is important is the Earth and its inhabitants. You have to preserve the Earth and that who inhabit it, because it's one have its function. And which one is the function of the human being? Sing, because singing the roads, singing the mountains, we keep the world alive. This is how he told us these stories of humanity and knowledge. And it is here that I still find a living legacy handed down for generations. A legacy isolated from the rest of the cultures until very recently. In addition to this exceptionality and its diversity, it is surprising in the profoundly peaceful character of their cultures. It feels impossible to transmit the experience and the legacy that it is so intimately lived within these communities. How songs are the universal format in which reality coexists. How obsessional it is to know the legacy that we are discovering. We still have a small step to see. We cannot know for sure how events happened over the world and time. Other important events in evolution and conceptual thoughts and technologies. Everything seems to indicate that on the island of Java there is an important archaeological site where a shell appeared, which shows a zigzag engraving, which was done intentionally. Some studies date this piece around half a million years. In a meander of the Solo River, at the foot of the small village of Trudin, we can find the remains that still exist and a small museum. Also, the accuracy of the dating is disputed, not its value as one of the first small signs in the map of time that we continue to sing. We have been waiting for this moment for a long time. We fly to Adana from where we carry out a short travel to Jeanette, heaven and paradise, the cave that appeared in different mythologies facing the defeated dragon with music between heaven and hell. 
for me, I mean, I'm going far and far away from recording ideas, you know. We have more right uh, playing at the moment instead of repeating and repeating. And repeating. It, we need the documentary and whatever. But I, I know music from all time, there's no recording. It comes. So you took the uh, knowledge, you took the uh, this power from the human. You make for them, you know. Everybody has the inside this power, doing, uh, creating ideas and music and writing books or saying something or whatever. Anyway, you can't be only by your like yourself. Nothing else. Not much or not less. I'm not a musician. I'm I'm just interested in music and I try to think through music it helps it's a way of life so I, I like music because it, it's a way to find a solution for anything you know it's a habit of life like uh, sleeping <laughs> eating or something you know? so it's not a profession so I'm going that way into music our adventure into the unknown accompanying Erkanogur facing the depths of this mythological cave and listen there the dragon's breath that waits under the gate of heaven after the first charge to the Virgin Mary we go in 300 steps to the bottom we stop at the last corner facing the sound that calls us
to life. Help relieve suffering. I don't know if it was a dream, reality, or we keep dreaming. The legacy of code, the metaphor, the music and its knowledge traversing lives, the reverie we share. Ne konuşacağız şimdi? <gülüyor> 